Hey guys, Drifter here, welcome to Black Ops 3 In Depth. In today's episode, we're going to be reviewing Battery, one of my favorite specialists, not my most favorite, but one that I do happen to enjoy a lot. We're going to be talking about her backstory, the glorious war machine, the underrated kinetic armor, and some of her cooler cosmetic choices. So first things first, let's start with that good old backstory. Her real name is Erin Baker, and she is the only daughter and youngest child in her family. Bad thing about her family, though, is it's a very large military family. She's got four older brothers, and they've got a long tradition of military service. Military families do have a tendency to do this. Because of this, she is very, very sort of alpha and driven. She's always bullied and put down and having to prove herself to her older brothers and to her family. So she kind of overcompensates. She works really hard. She's very butch. She's very out there, very aggressive. And of course, she enlisted to serve and she absolutely crushed her Ranger Assessment and Selection program. She's described as being heavily armored, operating fearlessly, and nimble in transversing urban environments. Her favorite type of weapon or operations is anything that blows up. High explosives, advanced explosives, fire, burning lasers, anything big that goes boom she likes, and that makes sense because she has a war machine and talks about going boom all the time. Little bits of trivia about her, one of her older brothers actually used used gravity spikes in the same way that Ruin did, and he sacrificed his life with the gravity spikes to save his teammates. Another fun fact about her is that I'm very confident that she is inspired by Katie Sackhoff, who you might be more familiar with as playing Starbuck in Battlestar Galactica. I know that she also did face and motion capture for Sarah Hill from the campaign, but I do feel that this character Battery is very, very strongly inspired by Starbuck or Katie Sackhoff in the variety of roles that she plays. Even in the pregame menu, she smokes a cigar just like Katie Sackhoff does in the Battlestar Galactica series. It is super, super hard not to get this reference. Enough about the backstory, let's talk about her ability first, and then the weapon. The ability is called Kinetic Armor. It is described in the game as being a very kind of special armor that disintegrates bullets upon contact so that they just kind of melt away and vaporize on your skin, basically meaning that she can't be shot. When the game first came out, we all thought this meant that she would be invincible and overpowered, but that is absolutely not true. After some hand testing, I've determined that Kinetic Armor gives you exactly 150 bonus health. This is 150 extra extra health on top of the health that you already have so that your total health will be 250. It kind of doesn't give you a second life but gives you like a life and a half. This is more health than you get with the uplink ball. It is a very very significant amount of health and allows you to tank a colossal amount of bullets. Of course a close range Vesper can rip you and of course taking fire from multiple people at once can still kill you but this will allow you to do a lot of tanking. Of note you can also stack this with the uplink ball to get up to 350 total bonus health, which is completely bananas. But the downside about kinetic armor, the bad part, is that it only protects you from bullets and it only protects your body. It does not cover your head whatsoever, so it's kind of like Ballistic Vest from previous Call of Duty game, and it only protects you against bullets. It doesn't do explosives, fire, stabbing, or anything like that. Now, there are a lot of rumors associated with the kinetic armor, what it does and doesn't work against, so I put together a very large testing session where we're going to go through through just about every single thing that I can think of regarding kinetic armor. So first things first, like the previous stats, when kinetic armor is activated, body shots don't count, headshots definitely do count. By the way, I'm testing with Music Man 1310 today, thank you for helping me out. Melee also counts, same as normal. You can melee them one hit in the back when kinetic armor is available, so it doesn't disable that. It doesn't disable combat knife, butterfly knife, wrench, or any other special melee weapon. You get no resistance whatsoever to explosives, we'll be testing several of them, that was the the rocket launcher. If you stick them or hit them with a Simtex or regular grenade, they blow up just as easily. And finally, even if you hit them with something awesome like a thermite grenade, which isn't as awesome now that they nerfed it, it's not quite as great, it burns right through that kinetic arm. Let's go ahead and shoot her in the face a little bit. <laughs> I just kind of like the way the head bounces around. And uh, kinetic armor will not deflect a tomahawk. Kind of looks like she caught it right there, like caught it midair, but nope, she caught it with her chest and died. C4 works fantastically, just like all of the other explosives. And very very finally, the P06 does so much damage that you can chew through an entire bit of kinetic armor with one shot. So if you're finding if you're fighting against a lot of people using kinetic armor, P06 will just one burst them right 
into the ground. It just shreds them. Nothing in this game is as good at getting rid of kinetic armor as the PO6 is. It is just awesome at that. So the whole point of this is just to really emphasize that it's good for bullets only. And I think kinetic armor stacks really well with flak jackets, and I feel that it works really well in several of the more popular objective modes. It's extremely good in domination. Why? Because you can jump on the domination point, you take a lot of extra bullets, and as long as you're running flak jacket, you can take extra explosives as well. You can really make it much easier on yourself to capture that domination point. You can also activate kinetic armor and charge into a disadvantageous situation and use it to kind of knock people off of capturing a point, or what I like to do is turn it on and run into a hard point. I feel that kinetic armor is probably better in hard point than it is in domination, and it's extremely, extremely good at hard point because you can turn it on and run in and challenge people. Same kind of concept with domination, stacking with flak jacket works really well. Kinetic armor is really fun in hardcore because people kind of aren't as prepared or expecting it. So you can take way more shots than you should in hardcore while you mow people down with one shot. It's very fun at doing that. Not as good at team deathmatch or kill confirmed or search and destroy these kind of modes. They tend to take, it takes a little bit longer to charge than what I would like. Charge time is about the same as the other abilities. Almost every ability in this game charges fast, whereas the weapons charge slow. I don't even feel it necessary to put the times up anymore. Another mode where kinetic armor truly shines that I don't have gameplay from this time, but you can find a lot of gameplay of it, is on Uplink. Kinetic armor is awesome in Uplink because it stacks with the drone carrier health. So you pop that kinetic armor, boom, 150 health. Pick up the drone, boom, another 100 health. So you can have up to 350 health, which makes it very, very difficult to kill you when you're going into score, especially with weapons, which is what every, you know, bullets, which is what everybody's going to be shooting. A lot of professional players use this. It gets banned pretty frequently. It's excellent for that mode, excellent for CTF, or excellent for almost any mode where you have to carry an objective. It's one of the few abilities that can be used preemptively or reactively. You can turn this on before you go into a bad gunfight, which you've seen me do several times, and you can turn this on in the middle of a bad gunfight and you still immediately get the bonus 150 health, and it can really turn the gunfight around if you have fast enough trigger fingers to turn this on. Like, if you get shot in the back once, you can pop this and then turn around and turn on people and you'll still have way more health than normal really throws people off really makes them mad but it works very very effectively again also fmj does not chew through this just just a little side note a lot of people think fmj shoots through it better it absolutely doesn't very good ability very underrated i don't see a whole lot of people running this online but i would recommend it for most of the objective modes do keep in mind though that while you're using kinetic armor you are not immune to all types of damage. Just because I take more bullets my brain likes to go to caveman mode and think that I can take more explosives or that I can out melee people or that I don't burn or that special abilities won't kill me. They absolutely will. Every specialist weapon will kill you except for the scythe and it'll still kill you very fast. It just won't one shot you. You can still be meleeed, still be tomahawked and still be blown up very easily. So you're not a tank, you're not a god, but you are very strong. Just keep that in mind. You're still mortal while running this ability. Before we move into the War Machine, I wanted to talk about some of Battery's cosmetic options because I feel that she has better cosmetic options than usual, and I kind of wanted to show off this clip because I thought it was a little bit better than usual and didn't have anywhere else to put it. For her body, you have the base armors, which are kind of boring. They're just kind of big bulky things that carry grenades. However, I really do like the earth body. I feel it's kind of punky, kind of sporty. This one's not so bad either, but down in the bottom row, the Murica one is pretty funny. Red, white, and blue, mostly red, very patriotic and aggressive. Custom is the same thing, but Soviet block. And Victory is almost Robocop, like new Robocop style. The helmet looks a little bit better. And the best one by far, when you go to black market, if you can get this 80s flash pink one, this is the funniest, most hilarious one. I think more like the Kawaii armor, or like Hello Kitty armor. I think it's hilarious. I run it all the time. Head options are pretty straightforward. You've got the normal face. The top row is all face paint. I think it's kind of ugly. Second row gives her a punky kind of hat that reminds me of the Scout from Team Fortress 2. Most of those look good. Bottom row we have America, which is Robocop Custom and Robocop Red. I do have the Hero Armor helmet. It's just a gold helmet. It's not very special. Don't have the body yet. All right, finally, we are moving into the part of this episode about the War Machine. That really is Battery's bread and butter. It's an extremely, extremely awesome weapon coming right back from the glorious days of Black Ops 2. It's pretty much the war machine from Black Ops 2, but on steroids. Instead of shooting just one shot that insta-kills people, your shot will bounce and split into three that can also insta-kill people depending on if they're running flak jacket or not. You can cover almost any area of the map with a ludicrous amount of explosives. This is one of the few that you can bounce around corners, which is very cool. You can bounce it on top of buildings. You can
you can arc it over things. It's very tactical if you have the skill to aim it. However, there are some rumors about it, so we'll jump into some war machine testing. The first thing you want to know about the war machine is that it can kill you in one hit from any one of the three grenades that split off as long as you're not running flak jacket. I do love how it turns you into giblets. It blows off arms and legs. It's very, very violent. If you do have flak jacket, you can withstand up to two shots, or if you're shooting at people, it can take up to two shots to kill. And of course, flak jacket are not one body shot, just insta giblets. Anybody it leaves nothing but their feet left. It's Pretty brutal, but I definitely do enjoy using it. This war machine is not quite as powerful as its Black Ops 2 predecessor, but I feel that the ease of use, this the type of game that it's in, and mostly the fact that it splits into three grenades makes it overall better. The amount of area that you can cover with explosives is impressive, and this is very, very easy to use. Most of the specialist weapons tend to be high skill, high reward. This one is basically low skill, high reward. I do occasionally miss shots. I do occasionally not dink people. You'll probably see it here on the in-depth episode. Sometimes I guess they're coming around the corner and I'm wrong, but overall there is absolutely nothing wrong with just breaking this big bad gun out and spamming it all over the place. What game modes is it good at? Well, unsurprisingly, it's the other game modes that Battery's very good at. This weapon is excellent for hardpoint. This is my favorite thing to use in hardpoint. I'm not as sure if the pros are using this or not. I haven't watched the pro scene in quite a while, but I can't imagine why you wouldn't want to use it in hardpoint, with the exception of the fact that if you're playing a very good team, the trophy system can disable your grenades, however you get enough of them to just spam in there like mad, you'll blow through any trophy system in a couple of shots. It doesn't shoot very fast, there's also no reason to aim down sights with it, but it shoots more than fast enough for you to get kills. It doesn't arc so much that it's difficult to use, and it's just pretty spectacular. You can also get hit markers in check, kind of like stun grenades and other explosives. Even if you do miss and get a hit marker, you do know that people are there. It works very well in domination as well, of course it should. You can blow people right off of any objective makes it very dif difficult for them to capture anything or if you want to capture the objective you can put your body on it stand on the objective and spam shots around the corner or anywhere just to make yourself scary most of the time when people see the grenades bouncing around they want nothing to do with it and back away and avoid it very easy to get kills with it it's definitely not terrible for team deathmatch or kill confirmed or search and destroy or anything like that i wouldn't tell you not to use it i think that in those game modes there are better choices for you but the war machine does work in almost any mode you can use it in something like uplink to chunk the ball carrier in one shot if you have to but in a mode like that you don't want to be shooting projectiles and arcing them i think just using the annihilator or scythe or tempest would probably be much better for your uh, effort or skill level than it would be using Using the war machine. Yeah, war machines awesome for ground war because people have a tendency to clump up and I think it's one of the overall stronger specialist weapons. I have a lot of fun using it. Probably haven't seen me use it on the channel a whole lot because I'm focusing on getting hero armor for this and doing guide for that and battery just kind of happened to be in the middle so I was working from either end and she's just been kind of ignored but overall this is an excellent specialist. I think that the kinetic armor is an excellent ability that works very well in a variety of game modes mostly objective ones and and I think the War Machine is one of the easier slash better weapons to use. Probably the overall uh, best reward to risk. Like the, the, You'll get the most out of this with the least amount of skill. So that's very good. Again, very good in objective mode. And I do find that her character is interesting mostly because I'm a big Battlestar Galactica fangirl. And because the 80s flash camo is very funny. I just like being pink and just like, I get killed by the guy dressed in pink. I, just kind of fun. Guys, that is all for this in-depth episode. I hope that you enjoyed I hope that you learned something useful. If you did, don't forget to like, favorite, and subscribe. The previous episode was on Seraph In Depth, and the next episode, I gotta keep top secret for now. Drifter out.